let's give this a go. Hi, I'm Lewis, um, play for Bournemouth. Um, a couple of years ago, 2018, I suffered a um, knee injury, I ruptured my ACL. Um, so yeah, we, we rehabbed that, had the operation and, and got back playing um, in about nine months, which was uh, great, my knee felt great and um, I was really happy with it. Unfortunately, about a week ago now, it's, it's now the 15th of March, but about a week ago I did the same, same injury on the same knee. And I just think I'm gonna, I'm gonna this time around record it and see if I can help anyone or basically show you the ups and downs of a long-term injury, which um, there are many of them. I don't know how good I'm gonna be at the video, I've never done it before, but uh, I'll give it my best shot. I wasn't expecting this to happen again. Football is everything to me. And it got taken away from me. Lewis Cook's Premier League season is over after he ruptured his ACL against Huddersfield Town. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, last night was pretty, pretty tough. I gave everything I had to get back. The best view comes from the hardest climb. Opportunity to get it out of his feet, it comes back to Lewis Cook. Oh. No room to shoot, yes there is, Lewis Cook! Oh. Lewis Cook with a swither with his right boot! He'll remember that forever, his teammates can't believe it! Nothing was going to stop me. And it got taken away from me again. I am Lewis Cook and I am relentless. Hello and welcome to Deepdale as AFC Bournemouth look to cap off a great week with a third consecutive win here against Preston North End after victories over Bristol City and Watford. It was, it was the same match day. I was playing a different position. I was playing a little bit higher up. And yeah, I was looking forward to it. I just remember walking on the pitch, checking the grass, see if I was wearing moles or studs, which is studs every time for me. Looking forward to the game, enjoyed the game. It was a tough game and then yeah, it happened. So coming together between Lewis Cook off the ball there with Cunningham and now Preston at the other end will carry a threat I'm sure as they try and chase a win and in their position in the table when they're not going to go up and they're not going to go down as Solanke over on the far side Lewis Cook wins the tackle the referee could play an advantage here but Lewis Cook was caught there and him and Cunningham had a run in literally a moment before and uh, there this time Lewis Cook was caught late by Cunningham Lewis Cook is off the field and is hurt and then yeah, I just kind of knew where I had a crack, laid on the floor and it was rolling around. And to be fair, at that point it was, it was really sore for about 20 seconds. And the leg went numb again, similar to when I first did it. Yeah, I was just in a bit of a, bit of a, in a bad way emotionally, just cause I knew what had, what had happened. Uh, I knew straight away that I'd done it. I was just crying, just, it was actually, I could not stop crying. I've never been like that before. Yeah, so I'm Dr. Craig Roberts. I'm a sports physician and I'm head of medical at AFC Bournemouth. I do remember that day, I remember it vividly with him going down in the corner and, and clutching his knee. I could see that it was quite serious and, and joined him shortly after that. And as I said, the, the important thing for us is to be calm around the player. It's no point us going there and panicking. Uh, we train for this, we run scenarios. So it really goes into an automatic mode. We had our suspicions. We're always very transparent with Lou. We discussed that possibly he may have re-ruptured that ACL. As you're running up to the play, I've got a mental list of the list of injuries he's had. So for Lou, obviously, we, we're talking about his right knee. We know about his ankle. I didn't see the exact mechanism. So those things are running through your mind. Is it his ankle? Is it his knee? Is it something else? I'm Loretta and I'm Lewis's partner. 
it was in COVID, so we couldn't go to games. Normally I would go to uh, the games. And he went down and obviously he doesn't really go down to stay down a lot. So yeah, I knew something wasn't right. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry, I'm out of emotions, man. Loretta rang me, she was crying and stuff. Um, I said, oh, I think I'm all right. I think, I think I'll be fine. I think I've just hurt, nipped from the outside bits and stuff, but didn't want to say to her straight away then. Message I got from him when he was on the phone was, it felt like it, but I think it's fine. So yeah, um, then it was the unknown. I would say that probably that was the worst time for me as a partner, not knowing if he'd done it or not until he had a scan. I was praying that I'd done something else, which is strange to think about it. I was just praying that I'd done everything apart from the ACL. And then I was getting a few pains and stuff after the plane, on the plane, I could feel the twinges and, and tweaks right here. So that was that was tough because it was just solidifying that I'd, I'd, I'd definitely done something bad. Yeah, well, obviously we to, to really confirm it, we had to do an MRI. Um, we had prepped Lou in terms of what our suspicions were so that when he had the scan and and the result come back, it wasn't a huge surprise, kind of confirmed what our thoughts were. But it's never easy when you have to have the conversation with a player who's been through a massive long rehab, got back to playing, got back to performing, and then uh, damaged his knee again. So it wasn't an easy conversation, but one that we had to have. I knew it was coming, but obviously you've got that little bit of hope that it wasn't going to come. Uh, it, was, it was a long wait, and Doc was really good with me. He told me, look, we kind of expected this, you expected this, so um, luckily it's just an isolated incident again. So that, that was a, a positive, like I keep saying, but yeah, I was, I was kind of expecting it. Yeah, so this, this is Lewis's MRI after his injury. Uh, obviously it's a slice through his knee and we're looking at his, his cruciate ligaments. You can see that you have two ligaments. This is the posterior cruciate, which is intact. You can see it running there. His anterior cruciate, which has got a screw in holding it, should be running up through that tunnel and attaching up there and you can see that that's um, that's been ruptured so this was uh, the first scan that we sort of had a look at where we knew uh, he had ruptured that graft of his and, and obviously needed some intervention to to repair it yeah i'm absolutely i'm devastated for lewis first and foremost he was playing some really good football and before i even got here, he was having a fantastic season um He'll be back fitter and stronger. I know what type of lad he is. His personality is fantastic. He'll have his family and his, his girlfriend to support him um, and the full team. The full team are, are really, really gutted for, for Lewis. But like I say, he'll be back fitter and stronger. Um, and it's a tough time when you get injured. Um, so so it's going to be a difficult period for Lewis, but he will get back. He will get back. That's the biggest thing. No, I didn't. I didn't know. I didn't know at all. It was a. It was a great surprise for me. Things like that you, you remember for your, for your rest of your life when you go through tough moments, like like players do. Um, yeah, the lads were great for me for throughout it all. Obviously, when it first happened, they they know what I'm like. They know when I need a bit of space and just crack on with my rehab and stuff. But that gesture uh, with the t-shirts for for the game was was top draw, and it, I didn't. I really didn't expect it. It is very touching because you are a part of a team. Even the outside part of a team, like you know, partners and and staff and everything, and the sense of community and coming together is really important, especially at a time when you know you're not really meant to be socialising and having people around. But you felt like there was everybody there for you. So this is a CT scan, a 3D rendition of a CT scan of Lewis's knee that we did in preparation for his surgery. The big thing was to see where this tunnel is, so where they dug the tunnel for his ACL, to look at the size of that tunnel, um, to see whether it needed to be drilled out or what the size of the graft was. So really nice picture, obviously it's not showing the soft tissues, it's only showing the bony part of his knee, that's his kneecap up there, femur and, and tibia and fibula um, down below. The main reason for that is, say, is to prepare for the surgery to make sure that the graft size is exactly right. Yeah, once you've got the diagnosis, obviously a re-rupture of his ACL, you've actually got a little bit of time to discuss it and determine what the best outcome is. So uh, it's Lou's knee and he's very much part of that process. So we had a lot of discussions with Lou in terms of this is what it is, this is what we think we can do, these are the options. He did see two specialists before deciding what procedure he was going to have and with which specialist. 
So yes, the clock is ticking, but actually sometimes a little bit of time between the injury and surgery is better. It allows the knee to settle down and, and you generally have a better outcome if you delay the surgery a little bit. I think with Louis, he ended up having surgery about 10 days later, which is a normal time frame for, for an ACL uh, to, to go in again afterwards. Oh, just quickly before I leave for the, for the operation, just give you a little little insight into my, my head right now, uh, how I'm feeling with, with everything. I think obviously having such a serious injury can, can really be, be tough to take. Um, at the time, the first few days after, it was, it was really hard. Working so hard uh, a couple of years ago to, to get back fit. I've got the best people to fix my knee. I know that, I'm confident with that. And, and yeah, I think once that's done, it's going to be a tough few days, a tough few weeks after that. But once that, that period's over and I can, I can start to walk again and things like that, I'm going to be positive and really throw myself at the, the rehab. I'll quickly show you my knee. I haven't put it on the video yet, so there it is. You think it'd be swollen? It's not swollen at all. Literally like a brand new knee now. Well, still broke. <laughs> Pre-op. But literally, it's got back to its normal, how it was before. I feel like at the moment, there's literally no pain. It just feels like I can run around, hop around and everything. But I know the risks involved with, with ACLs if you don't get them repaired. So I'm only 24 and I've got a lot more years ahead of me. So I'm going to have to get the operation. But like I say, right now, I feel like if I... If I had to train tomorrow, I probably would be able to, which is quite hard to believe. But, but yeah, here's what it is. So uh, we'll see you now. So we're walking to the the hospital now. It's only eight minutes down the road, so I'm gonna walk there. I don't think I'll be able to walk back. So, um, so yeah, a little bit nervous, I think, but. I'm going to be fine, so... Same thing? <laughs> no. It's early. It's early. London is so quiet. It's very quiet, obviously with COVID and everything. Another thing is the um, hospital where we're going to today is called the Fortis Clinic. Um, I'll be operated on by Mr Andy Williams. Um, he's quite a well-known surgeon. He does, does a lot of players and things. So, um, so yeah, that's where we're heading to now. And I think it's a really good surgery. and. I'm sure I'll be in the best hands and the best care. Um, just had the operation. Um, I think I went under about nine-ish. Um, got that done. Feeling a bit groggy right now, but yeah, very. Um, the operation was a success. I'm a. Uh, I'm very happy with it, so I'll try and talk as best as I can, but like I say, I'm a little bit groggy. Um, I'm straight on my game ready. Get the, uh, the swelling down. Ah. All right, we're going. Just FaceTiming the family. This is my mum. Hi. She's um, giving me some support, which is nice. Um, obviously, she can't be here because the COVID regulations and stuff that I've said. So, so yeah, she's looking after me as well. So she said she wants to say something, let's see what she can do. Let's see what she's got. Hi! <laughs> Is that it? That's it. Alright. Hi! <laughs> That's just the, um, they pump some fluid into the, to the knee joint um, during the op to, to make it easy to operate really. Um, and that's, that stays there for a couple of days, I think, so nothing to worry about. It's completely normal. Sounds a bit disgusting, but yeah. Um, it's been a good day, positive day. Glad to get it done so I can cross the hurdles now. Three points from the lads. Even better. That's good. Not the cherries. After the operation, I felt fine. I was on a lot of drugs and... There wasn't much pain. I think on the GoPro, I keep saying, oh, it feels all right, I've got away with it. I definitely had it. I don't know what I was thinking because two days later, I'm sat in bed and I'm, I'm telling you now, it is, it is horrible, the pain. He was in a lot of pain, a lot more pain initially with um, the second ACL. Him being down, I felt 
quite strong, not because he was down, but more because he needed someone to lean on. The early days are always tough. I, th I think mentally for Lou, Lou's mental strength was incredible. He had obviously been through a whole ACL rehab and, and that's hard in itself because he's got flashbacks of this long process that lays ahead. And he had bad days, but predominantly Lou was always positive and, and uh, inspiring us each day. Home now. I'm not going to lie, I think throughout the period when I was in hospital, I was saying how, how it's not really hurting much and I feel good. And I think that was just the painkillers talking, like I said. But I can't really trying to keep it straight as possible. He's going to be me for a while now. Get my series in, Netflix. I'm Johnny King. I was Lewis's therapy lead for the early stages of his ACL rehabilitation. Did it worry me that Lewis did his is ACL again on the same side. Worry's probably not the first word that come to mind. Um, gutted for Lewis, um, yes. Was I worried? No, because I know Lewis's character. Um, but yeah, gutted, devastated for Lou and Loretta and his family that he'd done it again, knowing that he'd have to go through that process again to get him back on the pitch. Yeah, those early conversations, uh, reassurance, trying to keep the player positive, but also accepting, allowing the player uh, to go through that grievance process and reassuring them it's okay to feel angry, it's okay to feel frustrated, it's okay to get upset um, and letting them go through their emotions because the last stage of that grievance process is acceptance. And once he can accept that he's injured his ACL for a second time, that allows us to move on with a, with a positive rehab frame of mind. Ben. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Keep going, a little bit more, a little bit more. I'm going to help you. Good. I'm not saying it doesn't hurt. Does it? A little bit. What's it feel like? Does it feel like sharp pain, achy pain? Mm. Fine when I'm like that. Kind of like a so it's a bend. On the back. Ooh. But you've been operated on on the front. You, are you scars on the front? Yeah. So what do you think it is? Swelling at the back? Yeah. <laughs> I'm struggling. Don't want to hurt you. <laughs> Why would you do that? Okay. Oh. see. how was your night? Um, terrible. It really hurts. Put Milo looking after him. Pain? Yeah. One to ten? Game ready on overnight, can't really see. We've got our shots and paracetamol ready to have in an hour. This morning felt really stiff, struggled moving it really. Um, look, I went into football to see the physio, um, and when I go there, I always, I always feel like I get more work there than doing it at home. When you get home, you can get a bit lazy, feel a bit sorry for yourself, which I was doing. Um, hopefully tonight I'll have a better sleep because because last night wasn't good at all. But I've had my painkillers and ibuprofen now, and hopefully I just have a nice sleep because I feel like I really need it. Uh, I'm back in football tomorrow, which is good. Um, I don't know if I'm seeing the lads and stuff, but it'll be nice. Um, they've got a game coming up, so yeah, that might be a bit a bit tough mentally to get my head around. But I'm be supporting them, and and yeah, we we go again tomorrow, which will be very similar to today. Good night, guys. Yeah, so planning the ACL process, we probably start by sitting down as a team and actually discussing what the endpoint is. So, through the long process, where do we need to get Lewis to? What is that end goal? So, for Lewis uh, individually, that's being a probably a box to box midfielder uh, playing in one of the most physically demanding leagues in the world. Um, 
So that's where we need to get him to. So then we work backwards um, and break that down. And actually you, you end up with probably four stages um, and that makes it a lot more manageable for the player, also for the staff, um, because instead of one long journey, you've then got four mini journeys into that. So you've got the acute post-operative phase where we're looking at getting the swelling down, the knee moving nicely, range of movement, flexibility, normal walking pattern. And then the next stage um, would be load integration where we're getting the player confident loading the knee uh, with his own body weight in the pool, um, in the gym. And then in a strength accumulation phase where we're building strength and power. And then that final stage is a sport specific, position specific workout on the pitch. In addition to the trauma of the injury itself, um, Obviously in the surgical procedures, a lot of trauma goes on in the knee as well. So he'll have a lot of inflammation and bleeding um, in and around the knee. So just trying to flush that out. Main goal at the moment is to um, reduce swelling, improve knee range of movement really. I would say the next two weeks, yeah. you'll see a big improvement across the two weeks. And then from probably week three post-surgery to three months post-surgery, it'll slow down a bit. I, I don't know why I do it. I try and put a brave face on, try and walk with one crutch when I definitely shouldn't be. But yeah, I think it was a couple of days after when I was back doing little things in the gym, trying to get as much swelling down as possible and things. And I was, I was just really trying to crack on. I think it's that's me trying to show other people. Or I said this before in an interview, when, when you're a footballer, you try and be the best footballer. Um, and being injured is part and parcel of being a footballer. So I was trying to be the best injured person I could have been. So I was just wanting to crack on straight away. And I definitely think the first month or so is massively important for your end result. So. I kind of took that on board. Yeah, obviously you can't do anything lower body apart from your left leg, but still not much you can do. So I was just doing upper body. I was absolutely massive. I'm not gonna lie. You've seen the videos and the pictures. I was too big. I could not run. Good job I couldn't run because I wouldn't be able to move anyway. So we're just taking uh, circumference markers, at different points of his knee. These two to monitor the swelling. Obviously we hope with time that the circumference comes down as the swelling reduces. And then this marker here is just a measurement of his thigh girth um, to roughly monitor um, if he's losing any muscle. So we measure these every day or every other day. The, the first period after surgery is probably one of the most frustrating. Um, normally he's used to being so active and seeing the lads go to games, he's, you know, struggling to walk or bend his knee. Um, you know, it can be can be a really tough time for the player. Okay, Luke, bend your knee up for me. 20 minutes on his knee. Up, 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 up. Come in, come in, keep coming. Keep going, keep going. Keep going. What do you reckon it is? Keep going. I reckon it's not a Ninety-seven. We do. Nice work, buddy. Ninety-two. In the day. Graphic on ten. So the cameraman face when you know. There's the damage. Happy birthday. 
Last one down there. Yeah, yeah, they use this to do lateral tenolysis, I can't say it. Anyway, stable that and then this is where they take the graft from, so they open that up, cut it out, drill holes in here, put the graft in, pull it through there, I think. Yeah. Done. Cheers, Doc. For another couple of days. Yeah, I think the fact they'd done his ACL before, positive and negative, so that obviously the negative being he knows he's got a long journey ahead of him, he's worked so hard to get back, um, and then for nearly six months later to re injure. Um, on the same side. We know that there's a risk of re-injury with any ACL reconstruction, but to do it again six months later, obviously devastating. But the positive of that, Lou knew that we got a really good outcome for those six months he was back, his knee felt good. And he knew the process, he knew what he had to do um, to, get, to get back. And I think that was, uh, that was positive for him. Yeah, he's doing really well. We had a meeting with uh, surgeon yesterday, didn't you? Yeah. On Zoom. And uh, he's happy. He's happy. happy. Everyone's happy. happy. I'm happy. Walking normally, aren't you? Go on, let's have a look at your walk. Mm -hmm. So we're at 114 degrees bend. When you're at 120, we can start on that. Bike. You can stop them nasty cardiac upper body circuits. What? It's a nasty bike circuit. Yeah. Yeah. This is a milestone. Like, the first few days was like, like that. How about you? And now it's, the great, but. So you're already, seeing, you're already seeing kind of improvements in it already. side profile that he's walking on a gradient, so he's walking uphill. So it helps with his extension a little bit to restore the extension of his knee. Obviously he's walking around normally anyway, but this just reduces his body weight by about 20%. You can offload him to 50% body weight, so if he weighs 77 kg, you can walk him, walk him as if he's 36 kg. So there's less loads going through the knee, less pressure going through the knee. But we just offload him by 20%, improve his confidence walking, increase his speed of walking. Like I said, just get him walking on a slight gradient, challenge him a little bit. Not like that? Yeah. Oh, that's better right now. Hmm? That's better. Does it feel better when you're walking? Just kind of just... You just see you're, you're, lean, you're leaning more. I like it. Just try to forget about it, just walk. Tender on the bike. Yeah, he said, yeah, it's a bit sore anyway this morning. Yeah, to be expected. Yeah. 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 First bump in the road, eh? Not a bump, is it? Yeah. Probably a little pothole. A little pothole. A little stone in the road. <laughs> it's natural to have bad days in rehab. I think it's important as a medical and sports science team, we were able to pick up on them cues and some days are like, whatever the reason, Lou, don't worry about rehab today. One day out of 
six, seven, eight months rehab, it's not going to make a difference. Go home, spend some time with Loretta and the dogs and forget about your knee for a day and probably be frustrated at the time. But he was able to take himself off and relax and take his mind off his knee. So that was issue yesterday. So what day is that? Fourth. Fourth, and we go to Einstein. So. That was like a week ago. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah. Progress is crazy, isn't it? That's as far as I could bend it. <laughs> and a walk. <laughs> Whereabouts for that? You know, over uh, Sutherland, you know, over Ferry? Yeah, yeah. You know, right there. Yeah, it's lovely down there, isn't it? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> little photos, mate. Okay, so we're seven weeks post. Up now with Blue this week. Um, he's doing really well, smashing through his rehab. Um, we've got a new bit of kit today to practice on his recovery day. So the guys from Resil um, VR Technology uh, Company, um, we've been working with to get this product in at the club. Um, we know that after an ACL re injury, um, ACL injury after surgery, not only is there a physical insult, but there's also a neurological insult, so it's almost, we describe it as a brain injury as much as, a, as an injury. So retraining perceptual and cognitive capacity and capabilities, decision making, etc. is really important. Um, so the VR tech is going to help with that, as you'll see today. Have a round you look of boots on the screen, it's got his on. Just yeah. check your uh, studs, Luke. You got your moulds on? Uh, yeah, <laughs> moulds. Okay, so you know what you're doing? There's a score on the left. Ball of pair. A variety of shots will help you. There we go. This was the hardest one for me. And a tip, what I found out, you can bounce it off the bottom. Wood. So it'll bounce up. Oh, I've nailed it. Oh, yeah? Yeah, nice loop. Yeah, so the nice thing about this tech is that when he's got the VR goggles on, he's forgetting about his knee completely, so any inhibitions he might have um, protecting the knee joint. This kit is great for reducing those inhibitions, getting him to start feeling normal again, encouraging normal movement patterns, football specific movements. That is nice to go. You're on the VR, Luke. Yeah, I'm real. Yeah, yeah it's magic. I'll go into it. Kind of. Give me. You know what you think about your knee when you're on it. Just got to be careful. You're carried away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're doing things that you shouldn't be doing. Yeah. So it's like those levels when we do level one and two, and then we stop. And one before I'm on the stuff. Well, it's cool, though. Yeah. Get all those coffee cups on. And the goggles. Look, all the stuff on the. You got some coffee cups and goggles. This is my normal setup. <laughs> this is what I've got to deal with every day. <laughs> He's been out on loan. He's back from his loan spell. <laughs> Mick Court. <laughs> How many goals you score? Uh, I'll let a few in. <laughs> I'm Nick Court. I'm a first team physiotherapist at AFC Bournemouth. I've been coordinating Lewis Cook's rehab. I came into the process uh, about, at about the 12 week mark um, and I took over from Johnny King, my colleague, who was moving on to another role. Um, so I was really happy to, to, to take over. Lewis was in a really good place. He'd been working really hard over those first 12 weeks. He was way ahead of, sort of where you might think he could be. Um, and I got a good sort of week spent with with him, with Johnny, working together, picking up the ropes and, and seeing where he's at. And he was in a really good place. I was quite excited to start working with him. Uh, he's an excellent physio. We've obviously got very similar traits in the way we work. Slightly different areas of specialty, but um, 
and that was probably nice for Lewis actually to have a different voice. He probably got bored of uh, listening to me for uh, one and a half rehabs. Yeah, I think Lewis was in a really good place. I think probably down to his mindset straight away from the injury, from chatting to him. I'd, I'd spoken to him previously. Um, he'd obviously been disappointed and you know been devastated even, but I think he'd had a good mindset to get over that in a, in a quick space of time and, and focus on the task ahead of him. Um, so his mindset, I think the fact that his body and his knee had been through this kind of situation before, maybe that stood him in good stead to start you know, progressing really quickly with his rehab and just having good support around him with it from the club, um, from, from his family and you know, have, and just getting cracking on with it. So yeah, he was in a good place and you know, I just had to try and keep that ball rolling. So you kind of move on to the next phase where we was at on the last video. I think, I think I've moved on to the next one. It was, um, so now I'm like starting to prepare for running. So like running mechanics, um, like drills up and down the gym, um, hops and things, uh, double leg jumps, stuff like that. So yeah, just really preparing for that. Obviously trying to keep maintaining the strength of my quads, get the bulk back on the hamstrings, calf. So that's all coming. No, nope. no swelling in the knee now, so that's dry, near enough. A little bit, little bit of swelling, but not much at all, which is normal, so. Full range, yeah, I can fully bend it, so. Yeah, flying really, I think it's 11 weeks now. So yeah, can't really, can't believe where I'm at, to be honest. Thought, thought I'd be uh, a lot further away than, than where I'm at. Do you know what song I've got in my head? Such a dad now, isn't he? <laughs> Such a dad. <laughs> what a dad. So he talks about now. He used to be fun, now he just talks about kids. Yeah, the relationship between physio and player is fundamental. One of the the most important factors in achieving a successful outcome after a big injury. Luckily, me and Lewis had built up a good relationship. We'd been through that journey through the first ACL and having that, that really good professional relationship, but also that friendship um, outside of football helped, I think. Uh, he just gets football songs every day. He's got all the different football chants. He did an England one. Yeah. He's got an England one. Oh, yeah. He's gonna grow out of it in three months time. But it's the Euros cafe. You've got to get you gotta get one. Yeah, you know why you gotta get him one? Because one day he might play for England. Yeah. You never know. As well as the plan that you've put in place and the technical aspects of the rehab, you have to get on well. Uh, the player has to trust that you know what you're doing and you you know you want to enjoy working together um, to get the most out of the rehab process. So we're not just you know the rehab facilitator, we're also a friend, a confidant, um, someone that the player knows they can turn to, that they can be truthful with, and you know, that support mechanism throughout the process. Yeah, these, these kind of people are uh, the ones that get you through it as well, because you, you spend so much time with them, and you've got to try and balance that kind of professional and having, having a bit of fun with it as well, so both of them are great for that. Trash that slide. Okay, no hands, yeah? Well, start with your hands and <laughs> 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 I don't know, I just lost control. <laughs> <laughs> that was good though, wasn't it? You ready? He <laughs> <laughs> just jumped off. Oh, it wasn't as dramatic. Which landed? It wasn't as dramatic. Well, like, what foot did I land on? Left foot. Yeah. It wasn't as dramatic as what I thought. I thought you were just left off it. Yeah. It went slow motion for me. <laughs> Sounds like my knee. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> joking. <laughs> Work on that. You're never ever going to stop the dead because of the nature. It's not that, it just looked like I was but that's scared. But that's the um, why I put you on there. Because you can, okay, stable surfaces, you can do that all day. Yeah, you I can know. stick that all day. So now we're just trying to do Yeah. He was in a really good place and I think the trickiest part was actually planning that those the second half of his rehab and how we were going to hold the restraints on Lewis so he didn't feel like he was back too soon because we know with ACL surgery the longer you leave it towards the nine month mark the smaller the chance of re-injury. Um, so actually with, with Lewis it was finding a way to keep him entertained almost um, because he'd, he'd done so well for the first three months, looking past that to see um, how we're going to progress the remainder of his rehab. This is Nick Court, AFCB physio, returning from his loan spell from Arsenal. <laughs> now obviously Johnny's left to go to Leicester, so Nick's kind of took his place. Knee-wise, feels really good. Full, well, got full bend on her. Yeah. Extension's fine. Um, Swelling's a little bit left. That might not ever go. Is that right to say? It might stay. Yeah, you might have a little bit of residual reactive yeah. now and then. Um, quads are massive. Hamstrings massive. Calf's massive. It's an absolute beast. No, I'm joking. Massive. Yeah. <laughs> nah, my, my quads aren't massive yet. My right one's still, it's got a bit bigger and keep working on that. Do some testing today, I think, get some numbers. Um, and yeah. Start preparing to run on the, on the pitch. When yeah, that, it's crazy to be fair, running that early compared to last time. Kind of took it took it slow last time, which was fine. I was always going to take the nine months, so that's why we took it a bit slower. But this time can crack on when I'm able to do things. So running, running is next on the list. The first session on the grass you know, after a long-term injury and, and specifically after an ACL it is, it is a threshold moment and something that you know, the player can focus on and the staff you know, in part of that rehab process. Um, we want to make sure that he's in the right physical state and, and mental state to be able to take that step to work on grass and so we don't want to rush it just for the, for the sake of that psychological element. You know, he progressed really well really quickly and was able to get onto grass you know, in a really good time frame, um, which stood him in good stead moving forward through the rehab. And I think from a psychological perspective, that, yeah, that is massive for him to feel that he's back on grass, you know, running in his, in his, uh, his football boots and you know, start just touching the ball out on the grass as well, out in the fresh air. It feels good getting them back on, Lou. It does, mate. It does. Long time. Still time your laces. Forgot that. Hopefully I haven't forgot how to play football. Obviously when I first started running it was a, a big milestone and it was, a, it was a big moment, part of, part of the process like I keep saying but physically I felt like lung wise felt fine, it wasn't really hard, it was, it was pretty easy, just a few, few like jogs but my knee was alright, it was, it was a bit sore but uh, I just wanted to carry on and, and make sure I could run for the next time. So like I say the main thing was that I didn't flare up and that's what you've got to try and see for, so it can adapt but at that moment it didn't feel perfect by any means but it was just good to be on the grass.
Lewis was great at just taking on board new ideas, new training methods, you know, new environments. We had the opportunity to go to um, the Royal Ballet at uh, Covent Garden, um, the Opera House, and that was a really great opportunity, you know, for, for Lewis to see some different types of athletes, you know, dancing athletes working in their environment to be assessed by the physiotherapists and Pilates instructors there and to work with um, one of the rehab coaches who's an ex-dancer and, and do some jumping and landing um, and just experience you know, a different type of stimulus, a uh, different way of doing things. And, and it was good, it was an appropriate thing for him at that stage of his rehab. Nice to meet you, Lewis. Nice to meet you. You too, Lewis. are you okay? Nice to meet you. Did you nice to meet you. Have you brought your tights? Uh, no, I left them at home. No, sorry. And down and up. Can you slow the descent up a little bit? To eat up, 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 down, down, up. To the side, so. Foot. Knee. Keep your weight over it. Yeah. Extend it out. And close it. Yeah. That's, that's even tough, that. You can feel it all. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be strong. Yeah. <laughs> can you show me a jump, land in a wide stance, and try not to make any sound on the land? Oh. That's it. <laughs> the last one. The last one. Nailed the first three. Yeah, first three were brilliant. You gave up on the last one. <laughs> I'm not a bi dancer. I kind of got forced into going there. Uh, no, we Nick asked me if I wanted to go. Yeah, I just thought it'd be a, a change of a scenery, something new, something fun. My gran really likes ballet, so uh, I tried to get her to come, but it was COVID, so she wasn't allowed. Yeah. yeah. Right. Last three, 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 spectacular finish. Yeah. That's it. So you're gonna have a, like a little bit of a. There's not obviously a lot of space here, but like a little bit of a rest of breath. So you're just gonna step onto the left. You take like two steps to right. Left and jump off the left leg, extending both legs into the air, going to a split. The main guys go right up into a split in midair. Yeah. And then come back. Yeah. You just want me to go on like. You, no, you just go a little, like, whatever. Okay. Just yeah. real so, small. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible demonstration. No, no. Basically, run, run. And go. Oh, oh yeah. Nailed it. That was so loud. <laughs> that, was that was the loudest one. That was it. That was it. That was it. That was it. Who is that? <laughs> Come on. Let's go on the stage. Nailed it. <laughs> Cheers. Yes, very nice. Well, like, <laughs> Thanks. Well, like, Appreciate it. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah, am I in? Yeah. Yeah. Not in there. Yeah. They'll look at my dance reflection and then I'm in. I think you might be one of those boys that catches the dance. Yeah. 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 So, throw no. it and catch it. Yeah. yeah. Throw and catch it. Yeah. AFC Bournemouth have confirmed the appointment of Scott Parker as head coach. The long-awaited appointment of Parker has now been concluded, with the former Fulham boss signing a three-year deal at Vitality Stadium, also bringing five new members of staff with him to the South Coast. I'm Scott Parker, AFC Bournemouth's head coach. My first ever encounter with Lewis was when we, I, used, I was playing, to be honest with you. He came down to, to Fulham and we was, um, he was playing for Leeds and I remember playing against him and it was, uh, I remember it causing me some some grief to be fair and the way he played and the quality he had so it was something I was um, I was very familiar with I then seen Lewis play uh, for some time in obviously in the Premier League and and now so he was definitely a name that you know along with a few others that I looked at and was looking forward to working with really I was still injured but I was raring to go I think I was on the pitch at that time so he was great for me and uh, obviously similar position and stuff like that and yeah, he just said, look, when I look at the team sheet and I see our, our squad, which is, I think everyone knows, is is really a really good, strong squad. Uh, lots of depth, he says, my name kind of pops out and stuff. That was, it was great for me and, and great for my self-esteem and, and my determination to get back fit and get back in the team. Love Island. 
feel like I'm on Love Island. I feel like I'm on it with this. Come on, is there any band? Yeah. <laughs> I actually thought that was a blue band. Yeah, you had me right no. on that. <laughs> yeah. What's that for? Didn't like a documentary in it from when I was injured from the start. Do you want to be on it? Yeah, yes, that's everyone fears and dies. Say something then. Okay, you've got to put a little bit of... Hello. Uh, ...the <laughs> knees on the floor, so up on your toes. You're going to go four right to me, push on your big toe. So just some quick feet, mate. Obviously, in terms of your knee and that, you just determine how quick. We start double bounce, play double back, play back, back. Now one, two through here, there. Play back to him, guys. One, two again through here. Not a double bounce that time. And into the goal. Yeah. Okay, let's move that through, Lou. So. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, well, I felt that was a big, big part. I thought it was a big moment. I, I wanted him to come away with a sight uh, to the squad. I wanted to come to camp. I wanted to see him close up. And the, the staff wanted to see him close up. We could get some good work. And I didn't want him to feel distant away from the squad. I knew that he was coming to the part of his rehab, which was important, but a part that also he was getting going to be getting closer to, to obviously coming back and joining us as well. So. I didn't want him to feel, like I said to you, there's always a, the, the biggest thing with injured players is a psychologically, they're a big element and I want him to feel part of that really. So, um, like I said, he put in some, got in some really good work. I see that um, over the course in, in, in Spain and then obviously progressed from there to then getting back with us. And he spent a lot of days on his own, working on his own, which you do, um, and working hard to get to a level of fitness that when he did come back, he can, um, he can reach the, the other demands of the other players, really. Oh, Guys, watch out. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's a joke. Ready for the second action, boys. You ready for the second action? Good, good. So, basically, the main bit of passing is it's quite nice to play the same position. Yeah. So, just basically like a little playing out drill. Yeah. Uh, again, no, nothing, like, nothing no, yeah, there's no yeah. intensity to it. It's just basically getting you orientated again in your position. Yeah. And, yeah. I'm just going to calm it down because I don't need to rush it yet. Sorry. Don't need to do a sidey yet. <laughs> yeah. Rusty. What? Rusty. Yeah. Good. Yeah. It's committed, isn't it? I mean. Tell you what, you, when you're injured, you miss stuff like that, even little things. When you're injured for like a long time, you miss little things like that as well. Yeah, Even just little things like that. Well, yeah, when we when we had the the new coaching set up starting in the sort of pre-season of, of this season, and Lewis was in the in the end stages really of his rehab process. Um, I think that was something of a, a, a stimulant to Lewis to to really push on to try and get back into the squad into the management plans. I don't think he was going to try and cut any corners to to get into that position. I think he still realised that he had to complete the process and, and go through all the stages. Um, but the motivation there to, to you know get back in front of the new manager and to show what he's all about and, and hopefully get back into the team. Hold it there, hold it there. Yes. yes. And again. One from one. Good. Oh, please score. Oh, leave it, leave it. It's heat. You know, the funny thing is, Lads, we'll play. We'll play. I was going to drop to my knees. Oh, no. Excellent, boys. What? 
Yeah. We're doing this soon. Doing this. Ben Rennett doing hard running. Yeah, it's tough. I'll go support him. Sidey! Hey! Hey, hey! I'll do one with you, Ben. Yeah. All the best, mate. <laughs> Maybach music. It's all right. Yeah. Oh, good, mate. Got that heel in it. Mic top in it. Yeah, Mike top man, yeah. Mate, Ben, Ben, Ben's funny man. Bare things though. Bare things. <laughs> Mate, it's hard because then you know you obviously... Bring Sally up, bring Sally down. You always start singing in between and you have to pull it down. Yeah? No, I don't even know, I was just waiting for up. <laughs> Horrible. Mate, that was a madness. How many did you do? Mate, I did one hour thinking, mate, you're in big trouble. Yeah. Mate, you were getting some wind from the face you said. Didn't realise you were there. With this repair, I mean, Lou was ahead of the curve all the time. He, he had very little swelling. His strength was really good. And, and often we, were, you know, we would meet and say, well, Lou's looking so good. Can, can we push him back earlier? But we know there's, there's research showing that the longer you take for ACL rehab, the better your outcomes are. So obviously, we, we certainly can't afford him to rupture it again and, and go for a third one. So although he was looking really good and, and from, a, from a time perspective, we don't normally look at time for return to injuries. But in his case, we had to say we've got to respect the time. Although his metrics were really good, his strength markers were really good, all the bits that we wanted were saying I'm ready to go. You have to re respect the biological healing process, which is really tricky to measure. And for us, we had to actually do the extra time because we knew that that would give him a better chance of returning and staying fit. Yeah, I remember it. It was Junior Cherries um, in the stadium. So that's where the, the, young, the young children come and watch us train for a bit. And yeah, I remember just walking onto the pitch and we just had a little possession, uh, a warm-up possession, but I was in a bib. This is, this is the most annoying thing about coming back from a big injury. You, you have a period, I think it was about one or two months where I was just in a bib and no one could come near me. And I was just, yeah, it was great. I was getting the ball, I was passing it, but I just wanted to do more. There was a few moments where people forgot I was a big boy and nearly tackled me and stuff and I was like you can't come near me like I was I was good I was popping it no one could get near me but there wasn't actually allowed to but no it was frustrating because I just wanted to fully train I wanted to tackle people I wanted to show people that I was wasn't thinking about it and stuff but hindsight maybe after the training sessions I knew I'd look back at when I was on the sofa in, on the game ready upstairs just trying to sleep and I couldn't on the physio bed in pain it was a it was a good moment just 
to reflect and, and realise how far I'd come and how lucky I am to, to still be playing. With discussion with our performance staff and sports science, we felt that Lou was ready to, to do what he needed to do. All his metrics were where we wanted them and, and we were happy for him to go out and, and, and play those 45 minutes. So we look at a lot of metrics. We look at psychologically where he is. We look at the fixtures, which is the best one to go. It's a home game on a nice pitch. Uh, and all those factors uh, were taken into account. Discussions with Lou, discussions with the manager. And then the decision made, okay, this is the game that he's going to go and play 45 minutes for. So, I just do this most of the day. <laughs> what? <laughs> Can't you like it, Annie? Ready to get the door off? Yeah. I'm so, yeah. I'm going to hide. Oh. Good luck. <laughs> Can't use that. <laughs> See ya. Bye. On the way to the uh, the Vitali, first game back. Um, it was like ages ago since I was talking to the camera. <laughs> Why is it six, six and a half months um, since the op? And yeah, first game back, 45 minutes today in the stadium against Arsenal. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm excited. It's been uh, it's been too long. <laughs> so I spoke to Lewis prior to the game, the evening of the game, and you know, just to speak to him, one of the things I always want to ask a player is, you know, do they feel ready? Um, are they psychologically ready? And I knew what the answer would be, um, but you know, it's as a, another criteria to check, um, which he was adamant, you know, he felt 100% ready to, to be involved in that match. Um, we talked a little bit about what he's going to do for his prep before the game, um, you know, activation on his own and, and how he's going to prepare for the game. But otherwise, not wanting to put any more pressure than that on him, he seemed calm and, and you know, eager to get out there on the pitch. Leading up to the get the Arsenal game, I was I was excited. It just felt normal again. I felt like like pre-match and things, and and just leading up to it felt 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 good. Felt I'd say easy. I was very nervous um, when he was returning to play. I would say that I was probably more nervous the first time, I think because, again, it was the unknown. Whereas I knew he would be fine. I knew that it was part of the process, as he calls it. Um, little, little minutes, tick over, see how the knee is, see how it is recovering afterwards. Yeah, when a player returns, we're always watching them. We watch them closely at training. We're trying to see if they're favouring any side, if they're avoiding turning on one side. And the same goes in the game. We, you're kind of watching how's he moving, how's he taking contact, is he is he avoiding contact because he's a little bit anxious. And we didn't see any of those with Lou. He just got stuck in and, and he did what he needed to do. 
Uh, we're also looking, you know, when, when they're getting a little bit fatigued towards the 40 minute mark, do anything change? Does the biomechanics change? Do they change differently how they run and how they turn? And with Lou, we didn't see any of that. He's actually, do you know I said he looked tired, tired, like blowing a bit? He just said that, yeah, it's hard. That's match fit. That's match fit. Yeah. Definitely did look like he was blowing a little. Yeah, I didn't want to come off. I was, I was, I was enjoying it. I wasn't playing particularly well, but I was, I was still loving it. They were, they were good to be fair. They had some, they had some good young players and they were, they were quite physical and stuff. So. It was a good game for me. Yeah, I fen felt a sense of relief, like him wearing the shirt again, and just, just I know how happy he is to play football, to even train, like that is huge. He, um, I mean, everyone will say this, he gets annoyed if people don't try hard in training. Um, so yeah, he takes, he takes training very seriously, like everything. So yeah, even just seeing him back training and just in the kit and then to be back on the pitch and playing even 45 was huge. Watching him, you know, playing in that Arsenal game, there's obviously a mixture of sort of slight concern and worry, but really mostly pride, uh, pride in, in him doing, you know, getting back to where he's at in the time frame that he's done it um, and the performance that he's putting in. Um, but yeah, you know, when when he comes off, you're, you've got a little bit of relief that he's got through that next stage, um, you know, unharmed, and and we can move on to the next pro stage of the process. All right, cool. So we start. Louis, we've had these meetings before. This is your meeting, right? So <laughs> first question is really, is how are you doing? Good, yeah. Um, feel back to normal now, to be fair. Felt good for a long while and my last few games felt like I got better and better. So yeah, just ready to, to crack on now, to be honest. You've done really well. We're looking there. I mean, it doesn't seem like 236 days. I mean, for us, it feels like it's gone quite quick. I don't know, you've probably gone through phases where it was really slow and then really quick. No, I think Look, it's gone. It's gone really fast for me. Um, the process being enjoyable, being tough days, hard days, especially at the start. But no, it's been a it's been a nice process. Everyone's been really good to me, to me and helping me through it and stuff. So no, it's gone really fast. So yeah, it's been a it's been a good process. Cool. Well, well today it's not really the end of your no. year. We always know we carry on with that sort of thing, and we really just wanted to go through all the bits and pieces, tie it all together. You've you've got an excellent profile. You've got um, you've got elite level characteristics, um, especially for like a centre midfielder. We we were all really excited to be able to come in and work with you. Yeah, like we 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 knew what type of profile you had, 
and this stuff just backs it up really. And already your baseline measures, you're already elite in a number of areas. So it's again, to be able to push that out even further is difficult because mm -hmm. we're going to set those benchmarks at a really high standard to be fair. So where you sit now, you're in a, in a really nice place mate from, from that perspective in terms of your ability to absorb and produce force. Um, you're in a really nice place. I'm sure you've seen from like the games and like what the requirements are for each position physically, like it's taxing, but your profile, like I was trying to allude to earlier, is an elite profile for a number four. And even if I profiled it in the number eight position, you'd be more than comfortable being an elite level number eight in this team as well. So No, no, no other than just to say, I think we, I think we, we came in obviously re relatively late really into your process, mate, and it's been an absolute pleasure, to be honest. That the odd moan and groan. <laughs> but like, no, absolute pleasure and just looking forward to seeing you play now, mate. Yeah, you exactly. I'll definitely see you now. Just excited to see you on the pitch. But yeah, no, it's good to be out there. Certainly yeah. from my perspective, if you were to start a game of football, I'd be expecting you to complete 90 minutes. No, I wouldn't be thinking anything less than that. So. Yeah. No, but. Whether or not, I, I mean, I can't start him. We win every game. <laughs> probably from, from me, just a big thank you to you guys as well, everyone in the room, um, the club. Obviously, it was a difficult time when I first got injured, but I felt like we all kind of got the focus right straight away, cracked on. It's not just my hard work without you guys. Definitely wouldn't be able to get to where I am today. And then long days or coming away or whatever, yeah, and going away from your family and things. Um, and yeah, when I've been maybe in a, sh a bad mood and you've kind of parked it, you've probably had a few running, running's a bit, <laughs> a bit different, but um, a few carrots. Um, but yeah, without you guys, definitely wouldn't have been here. So yeah, it's a credit to you, you guys as well. Pleasure, mate. Cheers. <laughs> Look, in his, in his final phase of rehab and now with him back training and playing, um, there's a lot of discussions between the entire performance department and with the management as well in terms of what's best for Lou. Uh, we build it up gradually. You would have seen with his games, his minutes his slowly each game, he got more and more minutes. The same with his training and we, and we manage that. So yes, he's back training, he's back playing, but his injury hasn't gone. His, his rehab is ongoing and it'll be ongoing for a long time. Hello, mate. How are we doing? Uh, WD-40 and then breaks. Come on, Ben. All right. Carpet. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah, by the, by the point of uh, the Swansea game, and he's, he's been around the team um, for a couple of weeks, and I think by that point, you know, Lewis, I know, is chomping at the bit to get on the pitch and, and, and tick that box and, and show the manager what he can do in a, in a full game situation. And from the staff, from myself, yeah, we, we've got no hesitation, no problem. We just want him to get out there and get that opportunity. So we're buzzing for him at that point. Yeah, that was, uh, I didn't even know where I was at. I was like, is Gaff having me here? Or I've been training all right. But um, no, I think it was just, the lads are doing so well, winning every week. Um, yeah, it was just, I was just happy to be there, to be honest. I was like, just get me on for 10 seconds. That, that's all I want. 
But no, it took a few games to, to get on the pitch and then it, it finally happened. Here's a moment for you, Willow. Yeah, this Phil Billings number is up on the board, but on the other side of the board is a green number four. And that is the new squad number of Lewis Cook, who last played a game for the Cherries in March of this year. His second serious knee ligament injury to the same knee. He's gradually made his way back and listen to the wall that he'll get when he comes on. Billings getting a huge ovation on his way off for the Cherries today. Green it up with eight minutes left. But it's a moment that Lewis Cook will have thought about for months and months. Here he comes. And Lewis Cook, such a popular player, such a wholehearted player. And on he comes for the remaining eight minutes. And what a moment for Lewis Cook. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I played at a different position. I was in the number 10, nearly scored, which I completely would have been great for this documentary if I scored. And unfortunately, I didn't. But yeah, it was good. I think my first pass. Oh, my neck was nearly passed out of, out of play towards Lloydy. Luckily, he got a bit of pace and, and kept it in for me, but I was even laughing at that. I think we thought, was it 3 0 up at the time? Yeah, I was just running around, sprinting around and stuff. And when I missed that shot and just looked at the fans, and they were just, I was just smiling and they were laughing and stuff, which was a nice moment. But yeah, it was just, it was just over in such a, a flash. I think it was eight or nine minutes or something. And yeah, I just wanted more, to be honest. I was very pleased. I, I think you're right. I think first and foremost, there was no room for sentiment. Um, I realised the quality that Lou has. I know what he can bring to this side. I see that over the course of weeks when he was training with us. So I knew the quality that what he would bring, and I knew at that moment the quality he could bring onto the pitch against Swansea as well. I, I, I didn't expect him to, to get in the box and nearly score, which I think he did on on the day. Um, so yeah, I was. Um, I was pleased he got back into it and, and obviously then started to, to, to get back into the side. Good score, man. <laughs> Did you get that on that alternate? Yes, Luke. Show your back four. Nil. Yeah. Nil. Look at Four. Nil. Four. Nil. <laughs> so for him to get on at the end of the Swansea game, was brilliant for us, uh, you know, for all the staff involved, it's a massive team effort to get a player back on the pitch. And we're all thrilled to, to see him part of the squad and to see him get on the pitch. We, we just wish he had scored that final, that final goal at the end. It would have been the, the cherry on the top of the cake. Got a lot of hugs and a lot of high fives. So I was just happy for, the, um, for me, my family and, and the, the, the physios and, and the staff, they work so hard as well and they've got to take all the credit in the world for, for getting me back to that point and I just give them all a big hug and give Nick an extra high five he got an extra one just for, for his determination and his work ethic for, for me and it was just a really nice moment to be honest yeah. Lewis as a person he's the ultimate pro isn't he in the club he used to joke that he's probably a 50 year old in a 24 year old's body um, you know, he enjoys the simple things in life, he's very humble, he enjoys time with Loretta and the dogs, or the boys as he calls them. You know, within a short period of time he's got to, got to go through two full rehabs for his knee, so it was relentless, uh, and Lou was a real true professional, he arrived here every day with a smile on his face, ready to go and uh, ready to crack on. Yeah, when I think about the whole process and the achievement, I, I really think about it as a team effort. Uh, the whole of the AFC Bournemouth performance and medical team, the coaching staff, and obviously Lewis at the centre of that, um, have all contributed equally in terms of getting him back to where he is now. Um, but mostly Lewis, his, his mentality and drive, you know, and his relentlessness to, to just keep progressing each day, you know, and especially coming back from a second ACL injury, um, has been something you know to to be respected and, and marvelled at, really. A player that is um, is relentless in what he's doing. A player that wants to improve, wants to get better, um, and wants to you know wants to to keep moving along where, where where he should be. And I see a real progression in Lou. I see he came back into the side, um, then had a little tiny bit of a dip in in that sense, which happens when you have long term injuries. That definitely happens. I think over the last four or five, six weeks, um, you're seeing a proper player and a top player, and a player that probably everyone's been accustomed to seeing before. 
I admire how kind he is. Sometimes it doesn't always come across that way at the start, but he always thinks about everyone else. He's very determined. He just is genuine and genuinely grounded, knows his roots and always looks after everyone. And yeah, that is a very good word to describe Lewis, relentless. When you've been through such a big injury, and like I say, I think people go through a lot worse. When they get back playing football, it's, it's just what I've done for since I was about five or six years old. And it's just what makes me happy and what makes me sad, what makes me angry. And it's, it's, just, it's just part of my life really. And getting back, training, even just training and kicking a ball around doing kick-ups was, was just such a big relief for me and it's just who I am so the feeling of fully getting back fit, playing, walking out into a packed stadium as it is now, it's just everything really and the sheer relief of, of playing football again at the, the level I left it at was, was a massive thing as well. Rounded off a, a tough, tough journey, uh, a lot of hard work. You know, I'm delighted, obviously coming from a, from a tough spot a year and a bit ago, and you now I'm delighted. So it's uh, it's everything I've, I've dreamed of since since I first got injured. It's got to still be here, I can't do this now. 
If you had deleted it, it would still be there somewhere. I'll oh, delete it. 23rd of October. Then you ACL return. But it was later than that in the end. So you did that at Preston? Yeah. I don't know what. I know. And obviously it was two, it was seven and a half months, so I'd actually been um, my first time was full nine months, so it was quite uh, ambitious. I was a week off. I remember. I don't know why I did it. I just did it. I even, I'd even put ACL return. That proves that I definitely thought I'd done it. <laughs> it's strange on the bed. Just been crying my eyes out about two minutes before. Football, eh? That's unbelievable.